color is light and light is energy so when light is in the air and it's it meets the surface it's reflected or absorbed and um, the way it's read in the eye uh, creates an emotion so if you should say it shortly you can say that color is the emotional part of the structure The Institute for Color Research in San Francisco has um, made a thorough re research on, on how much color means in the perception of, of an uh, object and um, claims that color means between 60 and 90 percent of, of the object and how we see it. So, um, so this is a quite powerful language um, and way too important. To, in, to just integrate right before um, leaving the design office. And um, it should be integrated much sooner and be worked with much more deliberately to, to actually make sure that the intention with the object goes through, carried by the color. It's very often so that you go around in your surroundings and you, you notice things because you notice the functions and um, the function uh, in relation to you as a human in your surroundings and then um, as an adult you forget to question and you forget to look with your eyes you just decide that this is a bridge this is a leaf this is a, a chair but you don't observe anymore you just you just go for the quick answers so I realized that if I have to work with, with color in a deliberately um, and, and um, careful way, then I have to stop knowing the answers and I have to start looking. And then um, in 2015, in the fall of 2015, I was in Japan, really just on a two week study tour and I didn't have any purpose of being there. But I repeated my like habit of noting color and it was like I built up this urge to express because there were so many color experiences. So it, it was like I experienced an overload and then f I decided that, that maybe that could become something um, like a project of its own. And that became my first color combination of three uh, and I decided that, would, that was what I would do. I would collect color combinations in, uh, in Japan, but colors from architecture and, and objects. And um, what, what struck me when I watched the colors in Japan was that it seemed like they very much understood their light and nature and, and their environment. And they, they have a, a great understanding of using colors that, that go well with, with the light conditions and um, a sensitivity towards um, color combinations in terms of not only going for the direct obvious color combinations but also to to combine colors that are more odd sometimes and and always infused with with a certain level of refinement and then after making the, the color diary Japan I became curious if it was just a random stroke of luck that I, I found something um, interesting by noticing color combination of Japan. So um, the follow-up was uh, Morocco in 2016, where I, w I recorded the colors there as well. The exact same uh, setup, so architecture and objects and, and um, all like the colors found in one, one vision and, and painted on site. And what was interesting was that it was a completely different ex experience. And um, I realized by doing the Morocco diary that um, we are really, as cultures, very much affected by the, the light and the color of the ground. And in Morocco, it was very, very obvious that all colors were infused with like the warm sun and the red earth. So the color combinations were sort of like I always feel like I, I need to breathe and have some air because they're so warm and it's like a brown with brown and another brown um, combination and, and it's really um, it's not contrast it's not it's not cold bright contrasts a few of them yes but like the main 
main palette is um, is a palette of, of warm browns and reddish uh, orange colors. So quite different to be in Morocco. My work with the color diary in Japan and the color diary in Morocco um, has given me knowledge and also given me uh, sort of the aha experiences that I needed to finally approach my own culture and my own uh, uh, color in the surroundings here in, in Copenhagen and in Denmark because I needed to um, have a knowledge to, to see with naked eyes again. And there's no definite um, palette of the North. This, this will be my, my vision and my um, uh, sort of the way I see the North and I react to it. And right now I'm creating that color palette. Hvordan ser det ud nu? Det ser fint ud. Det, og det ser bedre ud. Lige den du holder ved der, den, har, den kigger jeg lidt på, for den er en lille smule parfumeret. Hvad ser det mere naturligt ud nu? Ja. Nu tror jeg ikke, der er nogen, der sådan falder ved siden af. Altså, det handler jo meget om at finde nogle farver, som ikke virker kunstige og parfumeret. Altså, det er jo så tydeligt, at den bider fat i de mørke grene, mm. der er. Den tager jeg også med. Og den virker faktisk, altså, den virker lidt diskant. Jeg tror, det var derfor, vi tog den med, men den kunne godt ligesom være mindre kulør. Den er faktisk mm. mere kulør, end vi har regnet med, tror ja. jeg. Det er lidt spændende. When I I'm looking at color, I tend to just look at color as like a mono thing and and it's like a square of color and I look into this color. But it's uh, recently I've I've I understood that if I have to work with color in in a thorough way, I have to understand that color depends entirely of light and and by light of shadow, and that uh, I've always known that that color is uh, it changes with light. So there's not a fixed color, but um, I recently started uh, to understand that in order to make a color palette of the north, you can say I really had to look into this uh, light and shadow because we we find ourselves in shadow like 80% of the time. So um, on the side, I have another um, um, experiment here in my studio where I just record how light um, moves on a shape th through um, a day, like from early morning to late evening, in order to see how the light shapes and um, to understand the quality of light when it hits the surface of a color and it, it's graded into to, to different tones of color on the shape. I set out on this journey uh, creating a, a curated uh, palette of colors for the specific uh, Nordic light um, two years ago and um, it has become a book of um, 276 carefully uh, developed and curated colors. Um, having the blue and the orange as one set of contrast 
and then having uh, the light and the darkness as another set of contrast. Those two contrasts uh, defines us as a, as a, um, a region and uh, defines the way we live and shape our life. And then I divided the 276 colors into color groups of white, yellow, orange, red, purple, blue, green, brown, gray, and black. So it's 10 chapters of, of uh, colors. And I mainly did that in order to have a structure, but it also um, allowed me to make a short text uh, for each of these uh, color groups where I write um, about how I perceive um, the color through my senses, like the sensory aspects of my experiences of the color, in order to um, make you reconnect with your imagination. I do that because I believe colors should be um, dreamed or, or um, thought through in order to um, make them alive inside you as well as outside you. The light of the sun is actually white, but is perceived as faintly yellow due to the atmosphere. And in many cultures, yellow is primarily associated with the sun and with positive energies such as glory, happiness and optimism. Yellow is a color that is capable of grabbing our attention. Think of a pile of vibrant lemons glowing like a tiny lamp in the room. The large heads of sunflowers following the arc of the sun across the sky. Rape fields in bloom in May. Their yellow radiance lifting our body and spirit to complete almost shrill excitement. The gentle seduction of freshly torn butter. Or the sight and scent of a ripe golden cornfield that creates reserves of warmth in the body to sustain us during the dark winter months. I've chosen um, the title Shades of Light, an incomplete range of colors from a culture of slow and hesitant light to, um, to uh, sort of create a question in your mind. What, is, what does she mean about uh, a culture of slow and hesitant light? And why is it incomplete? Um, and, and then finally, Shades of Light, what color is, is um, the result of of light absorbed or reflected in the surface. So I wanted the title to sort of embrace all these things without uh, just being like a thesaurus of colors of the north or like a, a fixed uh, answer. Blå, blue, bleu, blau, blue. The word has a fluid, gently rocking musicality across many different languages. Like the lapping waves of the sea that contain both the unfathomable deep and an icy clarity. The color spans a spectrum from bright turquoise to deep blue in eternal oscillation. Blue is characterized by its ability to convey a sense of depth and space. The farther away something is, the bluer it seems. That is also why blue is associated with mental distance and clarity. There is a little drama in the blue range, which therefore instills a sense of steady calm. I, I set out to create a um, sort of tool books for uh, architects and designers, but I think it's more an attitude to color that I'm, that I'm um, serving here. This book is not like... Um, a book of recipes or it's not a new index that you can uh, refer to in terms of um, let's use this number in this material. They are here uh, with a very very naked and simple graphic um, layout um, given to you um, as an opportunity to use your senses to read the colors to give a reason for people to quiet the mind, to sit down with a book of carefully curated colors and sense them. Like um, 
look at these red colors here. Um, what are they? How is this color characterized? Does it have an overtone, an undertone? Is it cold? Is it warm? Um, or what does it do to my body? What, what does it make my body feel like? Does it, uh, gives memory, does it give memories of something I eat? Or, you know, all these questions that only the body can, uh, body can answer or our memories. Red is like the mother of all colors. The word coloratus in Latin and colorado in Spanish have the dual meaning of colored and red, and in many cultures, red is considered the principal color. Red is closely associated with the body and the senses. The human body contains a rich palette of reds and pinks, and nature's fruits and flowers also deliver exquisitely sensuous reds, like the taste of sweet strawberries, juicy apples and sun-ripened tomatoes, and the scent of silky rose petals and dried sausage. Red is the color of love, but also of fury and war. We cannot live without the color, which is the vibrancy and core of life itself. And it seems as if the drama inherent in the character of the color red is also present in its production. It can be surprisingly difficult to make a striking red or pink come to life in a material. The color red has many moods and easily seduces our senses into ignoring other colors. Like a queen, it turns heads and makes us bow down in admiration. I think, you know, color is, is it's so important that we, we, um, we start to, or we reconnect, I would say, because generations ago, people were much more um, concerned about the quality of colors. And I think, you know, because colors are so difficult to control and so um, closely related to feelings, emotions, and uh, in that sense, um, uncontrollable, we tend to be a little afraid of color, of using color. Um, because how can I be sure that they will work as I want? And so uh, I want us to reconnect to not talking about colors as trends or as um, numbers, but as um, a, an experience of the senses. Black darkness and white light, like salt and pepper, the two live apart from other colors, forming an eternal contrast that frames the rainbow. In the dead of winter, at night, when the daylight is turned off, contours and shapes of color gradually emerge as our night vision adapts. The deep aubergine shadows of nighttime darkness stretch out under the endless blue-black infinity of the darkened night sky. And in the dim glow of candlelight, the blackish red of the wine in the glass reminds us of the most important things in this world. Love, life, death. The different shades of black are full of secrets like vacant rooms waiting for us to open the door. <laughs>